Good morning, all. Lord, we'd ask your blessing on our time. Bless our talents. Bless our treasures. We thank you, O Lord, that you are good and that your mercy endureth forever. We would ask, O God, for great grace. Uh, flood us with your mercy, power. We ask that souls to be saved this day, that bodies to be healed, that families be restored. And in all things, you'll be honored and glorified. Um, bring great victory this day, O Lord. And, and uh, bring back to church those who have decided that they're never going to church again. Bring revival to us and through us in Christ's name. Amen. 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 So yesterday we had the celebration of life for Jeremy and Dreamhouse. And uh, it was powerful and moving, and the uh, testimonies were great, and the distractions were overwhelming, mm -hmm. and the food was amazing. And um, so, so really, the grieving process includes laughing and crying, and crying and eating and getting together. And some of these people had not, literally, not seen each other in decades. Mm -hmm. And now, all of a sudden, <coughs> the some of the Andreanos family has moved to Florida. They did the Florida service a few weeks ago, um, and yesterday was the service. And it's such a glorious thing to have mountains of help. I had, I had muscle help like, like, like in the old days, like in the six A days. Good to hear. I could hardly get myself to move around. Anyway, so we moved chairs upstairs. We moved them downstairs. We had a pretty full house. Mm. Bless the Lord. We'd set up the tents in the front and the back, and people were fellowshipping in the front, in the back, even though the air conditioner was on and actually working pretty good. I mean, it usually works, but what an amazing, just the conversations and the memories and the, uh, you know, just how are you doing? And so I, 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 am, I am blessed and honored to be a, a part of that. Um, I was the MC and the pastor preached the message, so. Mm -hmm. That brings us back to Luke. That will bring us back to Luke. Mm -hmm. Right. Pick it up on Luke 12. New Living Translation. We left out on uh, verse 12 yesterday. We thought we'd pick it up at uh, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Parable of the rich fool. Uh, um, here we go. Then. Someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who may be a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Wow. Okay, so... The Lord Jesus did not see it as his purview to get between a brotherly discussion. And we see it, we see it in the Mary and Martha discussion too. But he challenges the people to live agape. Greed is the opposite of agape. You cannot, you cannot be greedy in a situation and exhibiting agape at the same time. They just they run opposite to each other. So, so can the Lord Jesus be an arbitrator? Good morning, Linda. Welcome with us. Can the Lord Jesus be an arbitrator as we pray and say, okay, Lord, show us how to get along here? Yes. Can he be an arbitrator by saying party A is right and party B is all wrong? That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. And that's what the people are looking for. Well, you're Jesus, so tell him to do this. Yeah. And, uh, Hang around a few centuries. Yeah. It would be different. <laughs> That's right. So, um, so, actually, there's, you know, the visual on this is Jesus' heart is going to Jerusalem. And this guy stops him to ask him about inheritance, thinking that the Lord Jesus will side with him because he asked first. Sure. <laughs> um, and you think, well, that's an interesting um, perspective, and instead, because he asks first, he gets chastised. Yeah. Yeah. Don't think that life is about money. I mean, it, it, it's directed at this one brother, but the, but the crowd is right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> he's speaking to the one, but he's also speaking to the crowd. Like, sure. He's targeting the one, but that has a broad um, output and you know, to us. Yeah. So... 
how does the us apply? How does how does greediness affect life in 2022? Good morning, Pam. Uh, more of the same old, same old human nature at its worst. Yeah. I shouldn't say it's worst, but certainly it's human nature. Uh, so much so that in our day and age, in this culture, of course, we we think in terms of he who dies with the most toys wins. Yeah. And uh, that is the goal of life. I mean, without anything else to shoot for, comes it becomes a de facto standard. Yeah. And we look around and. Uh, and, and you know, if you look around in that perspective, you're really opening yourself up to um, all the ravages of uh, greed That's right. as, a, as a spiritual uh, place you don't want to be. That's right. So, in the long term. <laughs> I was praying with the Teen Challenge guy yesterday. He said, what can I pray for you for? And I said, the funeral to do. And he said, he prayed about contentiousness in a family at the time of death. And I thought, what a cool prayer, and how needed that was as the day went on. When uh, I was an only child, so there was no contention about uh, uh, the property or the anything. No. Um, Kathy, on the other hand, it was a, it was almost, there was, there was a few places where people got a little edgy, um, but most of all, okay, this way, <laughs> Kathy's mom laid out like to the last piece of silver where this would go. But there are still a few things that needed to be talked about. Mm -hmm. And they talked about it and they figured it out. And everybody came away reasonably happy. And so you think um, part of the life issue, boy, I'm talking a lot today. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Part of the life issue is that you're forced to make difficult decisions in a time of enormous grief and stress and those kind of things. Yeah. And it's really just an un... That conversation is difficult to have, <clears throat> who gets the silverware, <clears throat> but if you have to have it under the pressure of, they just died and we're fighting over silverware, um, it's, a, it's even more amplified. Yeah. Yep, sometimes it does take the event of death to actually, for people to actually make up their minds and, and realize we've got to talk this through. That's right. And it's a great thing when you realize how uh, subject to um, greed uh, a situation like that can be, contention over the will and over you know, the stuff. And uh, to, uh, if you have a situation that where people do get to, it's a wonderful thing that you, know, you could have a meeting of the mind and, and everybody leaves relatively content uh, with uh, how things uh, worked out. Uh, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. But if not, then, you know, it can drag you for the rest of your life. It that's right. really can. It's not pleasant. So we think about this in terms of having a celebration of life yesterday and the family scattered all over the place, literally all over the place. And so part of the family met in Florida for the celebration of life down there and part of the family met up here and some of them some of the people from up here made the trip all the way down and some of the people from down there made the trip all the way up and you think wow and there was some hesitation to do it because we've just done our grieving thing why should we do a grieving thing on Cape mm -hmm. and the answer is because and so some of the people didn't make the second one mm -hmm. but the thing was that it, it the death, Jeremy's life linked these people together there and here and elsewhere. And so the fact that they actually chose to have a celebration of life here as well as there ended up being pretty helpful. Ended up being really a good thing for me to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Part of the, the issue, I'm not talking about yesterday, but part of the issue when you're dealing with divvying up inheritance, there's you're coming off of that fear because someone has just died. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, greed and worry, which we're going to read about a little later, go hand in hand. Like one side is greed and the other side is worry because you're worried that God isn't going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I have to, I have to get all this stuff. Yeah. in order to make sure that I'm okay and my family is okay. Right. And, and you know, there is that covetousness that happens where you, you get the stuff from the inheritance and then you want more mm -hmm. and you want more. And, and you, in 
instead of working for the things of God, you start to work to get more. That's right. Yeah. And then you think people with people with massive inheritances or major inheritances anyway, without the, the life skills to manage that, you find it gone in a hurry. Yeah. But also not only the life skills to manage it, but the I mean, why why did my mom leave me anything? And the answer was she was a great manager of properties, she was a great landlord, she was a great investor as far as buying real estate. So she had the she had skill sets which allowed her to pass things on to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how cool is that? But my skill sets are entirely different than hers. Mm -hmm. So to think, you know, I need to be careful with how I, how I use this inheritance for God. And it's been 20 years since she's dead, right? 10 for you. 10, Ten for your mom. And 20 for my dad. 22 for my oh, dad or something. Anyway, mm -hmm. all of that to say, you know, thank you, God. Thank mm -hmm. you, God, for my mom and how she was and all that. Sure. And so, but how do I, now, God, how do I use this for you? And mm -hmm. and often people just go through huge amounts of money in a hurry. They get, sure do. you know, yeah. massive houses, cars that they can't, you know. Most most of my my parents' generation that received some assets, that developed assets over their life, still lived very simple lives. Mm -hmm. Mom would shop in seven different stores for her groceries for the day. <laughs> Just because, obviously, come out of depression and all those things, but mm -hmm. you need to be careful with the things. You need to be obedient to God with what he would have you to spend and not spend, mm -hmm. and where he would have you to be generous, and where... You know, so so the I didn't I didn't come as an arbiter over your funds, but I do come as an arbiter over your soul mm -hmm. and how you how you live your life in me. Mm -hmm. right. I think too with um, the whole inheritance thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very sad time, but you know, this guy is just like, Hey, hey, I'm getting cheated here. And, and he's worrying and he's greedy. And, but when my mom passed, she had a substantial amount of money that I didn't even know she had. And right after that, you went through your stem cell transplant. Where did that inheritance go? God knew that we were going to need it at that moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he you know, took my mom for that purpose, but he knew that those things would work out in that way, and the money that we had from the inheritance, almost every single penny, went to medical bills that we didn't have to pay, we didn't have to get a loan for, it. we didn't have to worry about it because God had already provided. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in contrast to that, we get to 16. Yeah, 16, okay. Then he, Jesus, told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm and produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger, bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, what the person say, self, <laughs> you have enough to, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, "You fool!" And God doesn't use that word lightly. In scripture, that's uh, that something to get get you in big trouble. Uh, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Now, we can think that this is a parable, this is a story, but this might be real. I mean, that people build, that people build up their entire thing so that they can take it easy the rest of their life. And, and please, save for retirement. Don't, yeah. be, don't be foolish about that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember the last time you saw an ad for a financial management firm that didn't end with a, a comfortable retirement as the goal. That's right. <laughs> but, but this is more than comfortable retirement.
retirement. This is self-adulation. This is self. Um, this is. I don't. And actually, the the sense of this is, I don't need God. I got this well. Yes. And the answer is, you fool. <laughs> you just breathed your last breath. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then who's good? And you can't. I mean, you can send it on ahead, but you can't take it with you. Sorry, Kathy. The last, the last line in this parable, yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. There you go. Yep. They're putting their riches, their greed is coming to the top, and they're putting their riches and all their stuff ahead of a, rela a good relationship with God, mm -hmm. which should be first and foremost. Sure. Sure. And when you have that, then, then. you're not <laughs> working so hard to try to amass all this stuff because you know God's got your back. Sure. Yep. And, and you think about can God use the wealthy for the kingdom? The answer is absolutely yes. Can God use the poor for the kingdom? Absolutely yes. Sure. Can God use whatever you got, time, talent, and treasure for the kingdom? Absolutely. And if, if you are disobedient in any of those realms, it just really hurts you, and it hurts all of the people that you could have helped or all of the souls you could have influenced or whatever. So God knows what he's doing, and he wants you in the... In the biblical sense, he wants you to prosper properly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does, it's never surprising to me when a Christian gets a raise because he shows up, he does the job, he doesn't backbite his boss or his co-workers, um, he doesn't, I mean, he, he's, uh, he communicates, he shares agape with them. And the boss goes, whoa, okay, I will bump you up in the company because you have these these uh, characteristics mm -hmm. that Jesus has breathed in you. So it doesn't surprise me when a Christian prospers. And also, um, if you think about all of the vices that can suck your money out of you, there's people that spend, there's people that go to the casino in a you know, brand new car and drive home in the bus because the casino now owns the car. There's people that spend, that don't have any money, either they're, addicted to this or to that, and it's just, it's draining them. Sure. We, we had people in this church family who would steal from their kids for their sure. drugs. Yep. And you think, yep. wow, yeah, yeah, happens. Yep. 22. 22, teaching about money and possessions, then, turning to his disciples, Jesus said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them, and you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Okay. So, but, but let's not get this wrong. The commentator talked about it this morning. How does a bird eat? Well, he flies from the place to place, finds the food and eats it, finds the food and brings it to the baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is actively working, but no, but no worry. This is what his, his instincts and his God, mm -hmm. God gave him the ways to make, to make food show up. Sure. <laughs> um, and he just does that. And, and, you know, if you watch the birds while well, they're, Flight to me has always been fascinating. Mm -hmm. How does how did God figure out how to make a bumblebee? Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, how does how to, and just the flights of the uh, even uh, me and seagulls aren't real good friends by the way. But um, <laughs> just watching them uh, watching them work it, and then when you're um, when you're a fisherman, you love when the birds show up. When the birds show up, that means the bait fish are driven to the top, mm -hmm. and that means the fish I want are right under that, chasing the bait fish up. The birds come by, and mm -hmm. so so God has a plan for how to provide for you. Sure. Now, often in the financial counseling things, we need to talk about budgets and what do you what do you need? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you do you need this or you know? And 
sometimes we have to decide that we don't need this. Um, that I don't need, uh, so uh, I don't need 16 of these. Three, you know, but um, so, so be obedient. I mean, it's got, not that God wants to cheat you. He just wants you not to be, and, and I've said this before, but I like it, so I say it again. God doesn't mind that you own possessions. He minds greatly when possessions own you. Right. So, so um, somebody I know and love has a standard of a year. If you haven't used the thing in a year, give it away. <laughs> right. Well, so that forces her to have a dinner party every year where she uses the fine soap. <laughs> um, and, I, and I think and that makes me smile because why did God give that to you? Well, God gave that to you for a purpose, and the answer is, okay. So now, you are more valuable than the birds. But obviously, he gave us birds, and he gave us bees, and he gave us things that make, that God has entrusted us with, with taken care of, and we've done a horrible job on that. Right. Okay. So, 25. 25. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Mm, 26. We'll, read, we'll talk about it together. And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Okay. So 25. It, it's, it's a rhetorical question, but it's not. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, quite the opposite, really. It, it, worry, if anything, is going to detract from your life. That's right. And it can detract seriously. It can give you a heart attack way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. So uh, certainly, you know, it's some, and worry is a sin. That's right. You have to just face up to it. It's a, it's a, if you're worrying, not to pile on, folks, because you might be, uh, have very legitimate reasons to, to have concerns, but to worry to the point where you're distracted and out of control and, and uh, your blood pressure is much higher than it should be, et cetera, um, you, you, you've got some adjustments to make. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and what, if you've been worrying about something all this time and your worrying hasn't changed it, yeah. and everything that you've tried hasn't changed it, what, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Right. Right. Yeah, catch on. First, uh, 20, okay, okay, so yeah, why worry over bigger things? Big things, little things, it's all the same. That's right. Um, and, and we that's develop a trusting of Jesus to take care of us, and then all of a sudden we find ourselves well, not trusting Jesus. Right. How can this possibly get? I mean, when we looked at putting together all of the details for this, um, I had 50 chairs to move. I had five tents to put up. I had a TV to move and to figure out. I had... I had details that were just, but all of a sudden God provided um, a whole bunch of muscle, not just muscle to with guys, but to do things that I knew needed to get done, but did not have the power, did not have the muscle mass, did not have the time to get done, how much, how much more glorious that was. And the guys kept reminding me, don't worry, I'll bring muscle to the table, and they did. Um, in the midst of their grieving, they brought muscle. And actually, it was really helpful for the uh, grieving process sure. for people to be, okay, don't take this wrong, to be active in the, in the ministry of taking care of the stuff that needs to get taken care of. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get caught up in the stuff that needs to get taken care of and mess up your grieving process, mm -hmm. but this balance worked really well this mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. Sure. 27. 27. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly take care of you. Why do you have so little faith? Ouch. I, it just made me laugh because um, Solomon looks at this and he says, huh. I want as much glory as as the yellow flowers or as the lilies. And he builds this suit. Okay, somebody build me a suit out of, I mean, a suit made out of lilies is not going to have the same effect. It's not going to have the same beauty yeah. that it does in the field, yeah. okay? So, <laughs> looking like a rose bowl float. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. Okay. And so if God cares, if God cares so much for the lilies that are here today and on the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have such little faith? Remember that Christ is on his way to Jerusalem. The crucifixion is imminent. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying the next day, but I'm saying in the, in the really soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the challenge here is, why do you have such little faith? The challenge in the previous, are you more valuable to him than he heard? Don't worry. The challenge before that is, you fool, you think you can store up enough to get. So, so this is, this is life-specific, targeted, I'm going to the cross, here's what you need to hear. Mm. Yeah, and he's saying it, but they're still not getting it because... <laughs> Still, 29. Okay. And don't be concerned about what to eat or what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. Everything you need. Need, need, need. I don't see the, see, see the word want. Seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Above all else. I mean, what a radical, life-changing sentence when we figure this out. Mm -hmm. Walk, seeking a walk with Jesus that is just so close, that is just so personal. The other things get taken care of. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good barometer yep. to, as to how, uh, yeah, how close, your walk is with the Lord. Um, if it's close enough, then you know your needs uh, will be fulfilled. You, ju you just don't have those certain concerns drop away, and you, you become aware of the fact that you know what I'm not worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> and you might question why, and realize you know the Lord has taken place in your life, and mm -hmm. that's a great thing. The more that you you seek. God in his kingdom, the less you are concerned with keeping up with the Joneses, the less you're concerned with what people think of you, mm -hmm. yeah. so that you have to have this type of clothing, and this type of house, and this type of car. It doesn't matter in the kingdom of God, because we're going to appear before God, and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, 31 and 32 go together. We quote them separately, but they go together. Could you read them both, please? Okay. 31, seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. 32, so don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Wow. Huh? <laughs> you want to put a smile on God's face? <laughs> seek his kingdom. That's right. Any other thoughts? Okay. Amen. 30, 33. <laughs> 33. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the persons of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there your desires of your heart will be also. So what you treasure is what you desire. But yeah. it's pretty much synonymous. If we if we find out what you treasure, we'll find out what the driving force is in sure. your life. Um, yeah. I cherish my children. Good. Okay. That um, I cherish I, I cherish um, you know platinum, uh, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Once we find that out about our heart, then we know. Supplement, transform me so that my treasure is you. Sure. Okay? Amen. So where your treasure is, there your heart is. So you've got to look at it. Look at your checkbook. What are you, what are you spending? Look at your credit cards. Where, where are you spending? Because what you're spending on tells you what's your treasure. <laughs> and you think, oh, gosh, I'm, you know, in, in our case,
case, I'm spending a lot of money on going out to eat. Now, we haven't done that recently because of other things, but you think, and that's not a bad thing to go out to eat, but is that really what you, is that really where you should spend your treasures? Mm -hmm. And the answer is sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you actually, um, and in Kathy and my style, um, it's really rare where we spend a really, really, really lot of money on one meal. Yeah. Um, it's only happened a couple of different times. And so, and it's not that I don't, it's not that she's not worth taking her to a really expensive restaurant. We do that for some of our anniversaries and some of our holidays. But I just assume you, like, workman, blue collar meal, yes. good, well prepared, you know. Sure. Um, and you think, how cool is it? So you have to look at what do you treasure? What do you, what is the driving force? I was in a sales meeting when I was in a sales company, and they, they asked him, what do you treasure? He goes, well, what would you put on your wall, like a constant visual goal? And he goes, without even pausing, I would put a picture of the bumper of this $200,000 car. <laughs> get the bumper first, get the car. That would be my obsession, is to get that car that's attached. And, and so just a picture of that bumper would remind me enough to drive me out. Huh. Whoa, <laughs> what a... You know, I mean, how, how much passion can you throw after going after a bumper? And then you think, buy it on Matchbox. Yeah. <laughs> Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Or it's the other way. Where your heart is, there your treasure is. And you think, how no matter what do you value? Yeah. And what do you really value? That's right. And What's that goes all the, this goes all the way back to the, the man saying, hey, tell, tell my brother to, instead of, Coming together as a family, after a death in the family, this guy is concerned about stuff. Mm -hmm. right. And so Jesus comes at him and, and uses it for everybody else and says, seek first my kingdom. Mm -hmm. Where your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm preaching tonight, and um, I'm going to pick it up in 35 tonight. So we'll have the choice tomorrow whether we start at 35 or whether we start with what I am. Yeah. Pretty, pretty challenging messages for this crowd 2,000 years ago. Oh, yeah. Pretty challenging messages for me and hopefully for you. Absolutely. That we would hear from God about how to use our time, talent, and treasure for his glory. And not because he's a God that wants to cheat us, but he is a good, good father. Mm -hmm. who wants us to use our gifts, not in an idolatrous kind of way, mm -hmm. but in a God-loving kind of way. Yeah. Oh. It's a huge part of, this, of the school of hard knocks that we're all enrolled in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to manage the material um, by, uh, qu uh, quantities of this world, the uh, things that are available to us. Uh, because again, it points to what we really value. That's right. mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're born into this world with a uh, a heart of eros, yeah. self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. And to a degree, you have to be, you have to consider, you know, who is going to take care of number one. Yeah. But it's a question of to what degree uh, do you think you're responsible, and how much do you trust to to God? After all, yeah. Uh, the, and kind of, that governs, you know, what is the, your relationship with him versus your relationship with the things of the world that you think you may have some say over, um, no matter what you think, <laughs> God is the final arbiter. Amen. And you want to be right right with his, with him in his, that relationship, first and foremost. First, last, and always. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for dying and us free. We thank you that you are good in your mercy and endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit. Transform us by your power, mercy, and grace. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Lord, I just, I thank you that you take good care of us because amen. we are your children. Amen. Help us to seek your kingdom first and everything else you'll, that we need, you'll add to us. In amen. Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Yes, Lord, thank you for the lessons that you continue to accord us through your word. We pray that you'll uh, add your wisdom to them that we might understand 
what you uh, what you intend for us to grab grab a grasp uh, to live lives that are a glory to you, which is our top priority. We pray for that direction in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Blessings to y'all.